So a question I've really had on my mind lately is does stringing lower actually lead to more power? And what do we mean by power? Does it just ball speed? Is it depth? Is it a combination of both? And then if you get increased ball speed, does that mean you're losing control? Are you gonna start missing more? Well, that's a question that sponsor of today's video, Swing Vision, also had on their minds. They've been an absolutely amazing partner in helping me get a little more analytical when it comes to backing up my feelings on court with hard data. So on my forehand, my average ball speed was increased from 49 miles an hour up to 52 miles an hour. So today we're using Swing Vision to track my ball speed, depth, and consistency to see if lower tensions really do translate to more power and if higher tensions really do translate to more control. Check out the link in the description below to try Swing Vision for free and save up to $100 on your annual subscription. Okay, so here's the rules for the test. You gotta use the same racket, obviously. It should weigh the same. You wanna match them if you can and then use the same string, but the change is you want to use different tensions. Ideally, you use two rackets that you're familiar with. I'm really familiar with these extremes, and my whiteouts are busy testing some secret stuff by restring, so we'll talk about that later in the future. Anyway, so the white grip is a tight one. I needed to be able to tell a difference somehow, so white tight. And then the blue one is looser. So here we go, tighter one's at 54, and the looser one is at 40. Can definitely hear the difference there. So a 14 pound differential, that's definitely something that you should be noticing on court. And we did string it with Coraline Snapper, mainly just because I wanted to test the string. It worked out really well at both tensions in the extremes. I like it more in the extremes than I do in my whiteout. I don't know really know why, but I do. So basically, Simon and I just like hit for 10 minutes straight down the middle, trying to work in some points, and both of us were trying to like take the ball, swing heavy, swing hard, without just like spraying and losing any kind of consistency. And you know, you expect the looser one to give you a heavier ball, a harder shot, and that is exactly what happened. If you look at the stats here, basically everything is green. Everything is up, except for in two locations. One, and that's rallies above five shots, so our percentage was down from 61 to 60. I think that's within margin of error. I don't think that's anything we really need to worry about, especially since if you look at the longest rally with the looser tension, it was 15, which is three shots more than with the other tighter setup. The other area where things changed was cross-court forehands in. And I think this is a good example of how different setups are really gonna change our games differently. So on my cross-court forehands, when it's effective, I think I have a bit of a bad habit. I really hit around the outside of the ball, really curl it, and I need a lot of control to find that exit out the sideline. I struggle a lot driving through my cross court forehand and <clears throat> that's something like I'm actively working on trying to, you know, have a little bit more of that fed style cross court forehand rather than like an Andy Murray where he's kind of jumping around the side. So I think the tighter tension helps me find a little bit more of that control, helps me find a little bit more arc. And this is reflected by looking at the distribution of spin I hit across all my shots. With the tighter setup, I'm hitting almost 80% of my shots top spin. Whereas with the looser setup, I'm going down to 70% top spin and most of that percentage is going into an increase in flat shots. And then of course, the question that we're all wondering about is am I hitting harder with the looser tension? And the answer is clearly a resounding yes I am. Average ball speed across all shots increased by two miles an hour, which is not insignificant. And then my max ball speed went up by one, which doesn't matter as much to me, even though it's cool sounding. But if you look a little bit more into the nitty gritty of the thing, look at my backhand cross court speed increase of four miles an hour. That's a really important pattern of play for my game personally. So I'm finding a harder shot cross court. If you also look percentage of shots that landed deep, I'm finding a deeper shot cross court. I'm also, you would think more control on the looser setup, 
Maybe not necessarily, because I also hit more cross-court shots in, going from 50% with the tight setup up to 57% with the looser setup. And then on my forehand, both cross-court and down the line, you're seeing increase in speed. Cross-court increased a bunch, which maybe is another reason that I lost in percentage a little bit. It tells me I'm probably flattening out my cross-court forehand a little bit better with the flat shot. Still finding the same amount deep at 66% cross-court forehands, but my forehand down the line, which is another really important shot personally for my game, it's a nice change of direction, did drop down. One interesting caveat we saw here, and it's part of how imperfect the data is always going to be whenever you're testing tennis equipment, is Simon's ball speed, not something I can control, but his ball speed increased a lot when I went looser. I think he really likes feeding off the pace, you know. His girlfriend is like a former professional tennis player. He learned a lot of his tennis hitting with her and she spanks flat balls right at the baseline. Hits right into a strike zone, kind of hip height, especially when I'm flattening it out, which I am with the looser tension. That's a little bit more in his strike zone. He likes that ball a little bit more versus when I have the tighter tension, I was looping it up a little bit, I think getting a little bit better net clearance. And that's probably another reason why my ball speeds were a bit lower with the tighter tension. And that's just the tough thing when it comes to testing tennis equipment. There's so many variables to account for and all of those variables are going to impact a player's game in a different way. And so that's where I'm actually gonna ask for your help. I think if we all work together, we might be able to develop a more, you know, conclusive bit of evidence, bigger sample sizes than just 88 and 67 shots hit. So if you would like to join the movement of seeing if lower tensions on average do lead to higher ball speeds, I'm gonna put like a Google form or something down below. You can try Swing Vision with the link below, 45 day free trial. So like you don't even have to pay, you can cancel it, get the data, I'll publish all of our results after this to see. Are most people hitting harder with lower tension or higher tension? Let me know, you know, which rackets you used, what kind of tension differential you ended up going with. I think you probably wanna do at least five pounds to really feel that differential on court so you get a little bit more exaggerated results like what I have here. And I wanna know, are you hitting harder? Are you hitting harder off both sides? Are you hitting harder in any specific direction? Is that leading to deeper shots as well? Or are you missing a little bit more than you wish you were? Thanks again to Swing Vision for sponsoring this video. Thank you to you for watching and I'm really looking forward to hearing if you are gonna see more power with lower tension. Let me know what kind of variables you think I might have missed during this test. I know there's a lot. It's really hard to get a handle on. Make sure you control for all of them. I think I did my best, um, but I'm sure, you know, the hive mind is gonna have some good ideas for how we might be able to redo this test in the future.